Hello everyone. Welcome to the series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. If you are looking for the free PDFs of these sessions then you can join our Telegram group. The link is in the description below. We will be providing you the free PDFs to this very group only. Moving on to the first question now, which says, identify the statements correctly related to the silver ETFs introduced by SEBI. So SEBI proposed the uh, introduction of silver exchange traded funds and now it has amended the rules in order to introduce these ETFs. So let's discuss a bit about them and then we'll come back to the question. Talking about the ETFs, so SEBI has amended the rules in order to introduce silver exchange traded funds. So this will be a, a new option available for the investors to invest in. Okay, it's a different way to invest in the commodities through the stock exchanges. Earlier there were gold ETFs, we were not having the option to trade in the silver ETFs. Now that option will also be available for the investors. Currently, the Indian mutual funds are allowed to launch ETFs tracking gold. Now, it's the watchdog. The watchdog means SEBI, who regulates these markets, has amended the rules to introduce the silver ETFs as well. So, let's discuss what are ETFs, what are silver ETFs first. We all are aware about the mutual funds, the investment instrument where the money is pooled and then invested in a portfolio of securities. Logo se money pool karke, kai logo ka paisa pool karke, fund create kiya jata hai and that is invested in different instruments. That's a mutual fund, right? Now, what is happening in case of exchange rate fund? They share the features of both uh, uh, the securities which we trade in the market the stock exchanges that are the shares and the mutual funds as well. So what happens here, here also the money is pulled and is invested in different assets, stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities. Okay, moreover, just by shares, it is traded throughout the day on the exchange. So you can buy and sell them through the exchange. That is how this has the features of both shares and the mutual funds. So exchange traded fund is a type of an investment fund and exchange traded product and ETFs are similar in many ways to the mutual funds except that they are bought and sold from the owners throughout the day on exchanges like shares while mutual funds are bought and sold from the issuer based on the price at the day's end. So the ETF is money pool in different assets and invest kiya jata hai, aur wo throughout the day exchanges mein trade hota hai. An ETF holds assets like your stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities like gold bars and now we are introducing the silver ETFs as well. So what will be a silver ETF? It will be a mutual fund that invests. So we are coming up with the silver ETF scheme which is a mutual fund scheme which invests primarily in the silver or silver related instruments. So jo ye paisa pool karke raise kiya jayega, isko silver mein ya silver related instruments mein invest kiya jayega jin mein silver ki backing hai which have silver as the underlying product. Alright, I hope the concept of ETFs and silver ETFs is clear now. Moving ahead now, mutual fund schemes investing in the exchange traded commodity derivatives hold underlying assets in case of physical settlement of such contracts. So if I talk about a derivative, it's a contract which derives its value from some underlying asset, right? So you have to have that asset. Suppose you are uh, dealing in say gold ETFs. So th there will be a backing of gold. Gold will be kept somewhere in custody. So similarly for this silver ETFs now, uh, the, uh, this, the assets of the scheme being silver or silver related instruments will keep Silver in custody and where will the silver be kept? It will be kept with the custodian registered with SEBI. So whenever in such contracts the final settlement has to take place, the money is provided, the physical settlement the physical settlement of uh, goods is done okay for the exchange of money so aapko jo bhi gold wagera hai wo handle karke fir paise liye jate hai ya vice versa so for final settlement physical settlement of these underlying goods is done so in case of a silver silver needs to be kept in custody which will be used in the physical settlement so where you will keep the silver with the custodians registered with sebi silver etfs will provide an option additional option to investors to invest in commodity as an asset class. 
till now we were investing in gold etf so we had the option to invest in a commodity called gold now through these silver etfs we'll get an option to invest in silver as well so it will help investors diversify the portfolio what benefits will it bring we can diversify our portfolio we can add another instrument to our portfolio abhi tak hum sirf gold mein kar pate the ab hum silver ko bhi apne portfolio mein add kar sakte hain इस फंड के थ्रू लाइक इन केस ऑफ गोल्ड सिल्वर ईटीएफ विल ऑल्सो पास द बेनिफिट ऑफ प्राइस एफिशियंसी लिक्विडिटी कन्वीनियंस टू द रिटेल कस्टमर्स सो सिल्वर ईटीएफ हमारा सिल्वर में इन्वेस्टमेंट करना ईजी कर देंगे उसकी प्राइस एफिशियंसी होगी और बेटर प्राइज कवर हो पाएंगे सिल्वर के लिक्विडिटी होगी मार्केट में इसकी डीलिंग होगी एंड इट विल ऑब्वियसली प्रोवाइड मोर कन्वीनियंस टू द रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स हु वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट इन सिल्वर okay so till now there were no silver etf so people were having silver in the form of silver bars coins jewelry and now they can basically buy the securities having the backing of silver ab hum un securities ko khareed sakte hain jo silver ko denominate karti hain and unhe hum khareed bhi sakte hain aur sell bhi kar sakte hain daily exchanges mein okay so this was all about this very initiative of sebi moving back to our question which of these is correctly related to silver etfs so we just discussed it's a mutual fund investing primarily in silver or silver related instruments this is correct the assets of scheme being silver will be kept in custody of custodian registered with sebi this is also correct it will help investors diversify their portfolio obviously hum hamare paas ek aur option aa gaya invest karne ka hamara portfolio aur diversify hoga so all these three are correct answer is option e So this was all about the first question. Moving to the next question now, which says, which of the following is incorrect in relation to the October inflation levels? So every month the inflation levels are released uh, for the previous month. What has been the status of inflation? So now the uh, the data for October is out. Let's discuss the inflation levels for the month of October as well. As you all are clearly. Uh, aware about the concept of inflation it's basically a sustained rise in the prices over a period of time jab prices hamare badh rahe hain over a period of time so har month ka hum inflation level check karte hain we check the inflation levels for every month data for october inflation levels is out so talking about the wpi first that is your wholesale price index the inflation at the wholesale level so the inflation stood at 12.54% in october agar aapne pichle months ka bhi inflation levels check mein rakha hai to aapko dekhne ko milega ki inflation fir se badh gaya hai october mein if you are keeping a check on the inflation levels then you would be aware then in august it was around 11.64 then it reduced in september to around 10.66 now it has again risen to 12.54 in october If you compare this with the October 2020 previous year, then we can see a drastic rise has happened over a year. So, what has been the reason behind the rise in WPI? It's primarily due to rise in prices of mineral oils, basic metals, food products, crude petroleum, natural gas, chemicals, and chemical products. So, in sub products, me rise आने की वजह से जो wholesale level पे rise हुआ है, इस वजह से हमारा WPI increase हुआ है. Now coming to the next indicator of inflation used by RBI in making the policies as well that is the consumer price index the retail level inflation so what is the status of retail level inflation it has also increased although marginally so in september it was at 4.35% it has slightly increased to 4.48% in the month of october so thoda sa increase hua hai If you compare it with the uh, inflation last year, it was seven point six one percent. Okay, so why we have seen a rise in CPI? That's because of the rise in the food prices. Okay, high input cost, fuel cost, and the commodity prices. So in sub things, okay, rise on rise on. Okay, because food prices are increasing. Which is why this is a little change in our inflation levels. Mein. Despite of that. The CPI is still within the RBI's target range of two to six percent. So we have discussed the inflation levels levels for past few months, and we even saw that they surpassed this two to six percent level. It went beyond six percent or nearly six percent as well. But now it is within the target limit. It is uh, ranging at around four percent something, right? So it's within the target levels of RBI. 
and largely the rise in inflation is unlikely to have a bearing in the key rates by the mpc so monetary policy committee takes a decision on the monetary policy based on the inflation levels but this is just a minute change it might not affect the uh, monetary policy decision of rbi in fact when it surpassed the record levels of 2 to 6% then also rbi continued with the Uh, accommodative stance keeping in mind the growth objective okay so now uh, when the things are improving after covid uh, the recovery began the supply side disruptions have started uh, recovering that issue has started uh, being getting resolved so we can see the inflation level being within the target limit and rbi won't have any problem in deciding the policy keeping in mind this rise in inflation all right now you would be aware that recently we saw a cut in the excise duty the price of petrol diesel they dropped down okay moreover a good monsoon year is a uh, has been there then uh, there has been return to normal normalcy so all these things we, will help in easing the inflation in the coming months aane wale time mein hame inflation ho sakta hai aur ईज होती हुई दिखाई दे ये ड्यूटी का काट जो हुआ है इसकी वजह से हो सकता है सीपीआई लेवल्स में हमारा रिडक्शन आएगा आने वाले नेक्स्ट मंथ के इन्फ्लेशन डेटा में लेट्स सी व्हाट्स दी ओवरऑल इन्फ्लेशन लेवल्स कीपिंग इन माइंड दी ब्रॉडर पर्सपेक्टिव सो कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन नाउ वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दी इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट बिकॉज इट से हाई रेट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इन अक्टूबर स्टेट एट ट्वेल्व ओके सो हाई रेट ऑफ i it should have been wpi related in wholesale level inflation okay then wpi stood at 7% on october no third says india's retail inflation rose marginally to 4.48 in october yes india's retail inflation rose to 6.5% in the month of october surpassing rbi target levels no so first is correct third is correct second and fourth are incorrect answer is option e moving to the last question now which says rbi has clarified some norms related to npas which of the following is correct in this regard so we are thoroughly aware about the problem of npas the growing npas where the amount of loan uh, becomes overdue you are not able to pay back the the interest amount the principal amount for a period beyond 90 days then we classify such loans as npas so rbi has clarified certain rules related to npas okay let's see what those rules are then we'll come back to the question and answer it so what norms have been clarified first is related to the upgradation of the accounts classified as npas now once any loan becomes overdue say beyond 90 days we classify it as an np but once people start paying back that loan okay the borrowers start repaying that we start getting back the interest amount the principal amount then that loan loan gets classified again as a standard asset standard assets are those assets where the amount is coming on time it is not overdue you are receiving the interest you are receiving the principal ओके एनपीएस की क्लासिफिकेशन होती है इतने टाइम के बियॉन्ड आपका लोन एनपीए है उसकी अलग अलग कैटेगरीज हैं ओके सो स्टैंडर्ड असेट इज वो अभी एनपीए नहीं हुआ है वो आपको जितना प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट है या फिर जो भी आपका इंटरेस्ट अमाउंट ओवर है वो मिल रहा है आपको कोई इशू नहीं है देन वी कॉल इट अ स्टैंडर्ड असेट इट्स नॉट फेसिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एन पी ए सो वंस पीपल स्टार्ट पेइंग बैक द इंटरेस्ट इन प्रिंसिपल वेन शुड बी क्लासिफाई एन असेट एज अ स्टैंडर्ड असेट इट हैज बीन क्लैरिफाइड बाई आर बी आई दैट एन पी एस विल बी क्लासिफाइड एज स्टैंडर्ड असेट्स ओनली ऑन पेमेंट ऑफ नॉट ओनली ऑन पेमेंट ऑफ बोथ the arrears of interest and the principal what rbi observed that people were classifying nps to standard assets on payment of only interest overdues and partial overdues so to avoid any ambiguity in this regard this has been clarified log kya karte the ki jo bhi lenders hain jo npas mein apne loans classify karte the jab log thoda bahut bhi borrowers interest ke arrears pay karna shuru kar dete the partial overdues repay ho jate the to asset ko wo standard classify kar dete the but rbi has issued a clarification ki jab tak sara ka sara interest aur principal amount repay nahi hoga jo arrears mein tha तब तक आप एक एन पी ए को स्टैंडर्ड असेट की तरह क्लासीफाई नहीं करोगे सो यू नीड टू गेट बैक ऑल द इंटरेस्ट एज वेल एज द प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट टू क्लासीफाई एन एन पी ए बैक 
एज अ स्टैंडर्ड असेट सो ये एक क्लैरिफिकेशन है द नेक्स्ट क्लैरिफिकेशन इज रिलेटेड टू द स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ द ड्यू डेट एंड द रीपेमेंट डेट सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द एग्जिस्टिंग लोन अग्रीमेंट्स वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग वॉज दैट द लेंडर्स were missing out on mentioning the repayment date so due dates related to the loans so rbi has instructed them that in the loan agreements they need to mention the due date to repay the frequency of repayment the break up between principal and interest the uh, special mention account np classification all those dates in the loan agreements okay so rbi ne ye instruct kiya hai lenders ko ki jo bhi loan agreements banti hain उसमें मेंशन होना चाहिए कि लोन कब रीपे करना है क्या ब्रेकअप है इंटरेस्ट अमाउंट का प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट का कितना प्रिंसिपल रीपे करना है कितना इंटरेस्ट क्या फ्रीक्वेंसी रहेगी रीपेमेंट की इसके अलावा स्पेशल मेंशन अकाउंट्स एनपीए का क्लासिफिकेशन कब आपका लोन जो है जो रीपे uh, नहीं हो रहा टाइमली वो स्पेशल मेंशन अकाउंट में आपको उसको मेंशन करना होगा ताकि नेसेसरी एक्शंस लिए जाए बिफोर कर दैट लोन गेट्स कन्वर्टेड फाइनली इनटू एन एनपीए एंड व्हेन विल एन एंड अ लोन गेट क्लासिफाइड एज एन एनपीए सो सारी डेट्स क्लियरली लोन एग्रीमेंट्स में मैंशन होनी चाहिए सी द करेंट नॉर्म्स आर दैट एन अमाउंट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज ओवर ड्यू इफ इट इज नॉट पेड ऑन द ड्यू डेट but it was observed that the due date was not mentioned in the loan agreement so that was the problem with which led to uh, uh, which led to not specifying mentioning loan agreements and instead a description of due dates is mentioned leading scope for different interpretation so kya hota tha loan ko overdue jab hoga okay loan will be treated as an overdue if it is not paid on the due date ab aapka loan overdue ho gaya hai या इतने टाइम के बियॉन्ड ओवर ड्यू हो गया आपको उसको एनपीए क्लासिफाई करना है ये तो तब पता चलेगा ना जब आपके पास ड्यू डेट होगी लोन अग्रीमेंट्स में क्लियरली ड्यू डेट मेंशन नहीं होती थी एक तरह से डिस्क्रिप्शन दे देते थे जिस वजह से लोग अलग अलग वे में इंटरप्रेट करते थे ड्यू डेट सो क्लियर नॉर्म्स नहीं थे नाउ द क्लियर नॉर्म्स है ड्यू डेट सो दैट दे कैन डिसाइड वेन द लोन इज ओवर ड्यू हाउ मच टाइम हैज पास सिंस इट्स ओवर ड्यू एंड नाउ इट नीड्स टू बी क्लासिफाइड एज एन एन so that's the reason why rbi has clarified that the uh, lenders need to mention the break up of principal uh, interest due date and all such things clearly in the loan agreements also if the moratorium facility has been availed if you have provided some time to repay the loan the exact date of recommencement of that repayment should also be specified in the loan agreement so kab aapko repay karna shuru karna hai sab kuch लोन अग्रीमेंट में मेंशन होना चाहिए अगर आपने थोड़ा मोरिटोरियम फैसिलिटी भी दी थी तो सो दिस वाज ऑल विच आई वांटेड टू डिस्कस कमिंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट रूल इन दिस रिगार्ड सो ऑल ऑफ दिस यू कैन सी ऑल दीज ऑप्शन आर रिलेटेड टू द स्टैंडर्ड असेट वॉट्स द नॉर्म रिलेटेड टू स्टैंडर्ड असेट दैट हैज बीन क्लैरिफाइड इट इज दैट द एन पी एज विल बी क्लासिफाइड बैक एज अ स्टैंडर्ड असेट ओनली वेन इंटायर इंटरेस्ट एंड प्रिंसिपल इज टी पेड बाई दी बोर राइट सो द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन से इज सो सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट टू डे सेशन विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू एंड अप दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच